All right, glad you could join me again. Out here with the uh, 1100 Tiger Shark. We're gonna, uh, this is a repower project. So we've got this TSR 1100. Had a, uh, had a triple uh, three cylinder 1100 cc engine that's blown if you haven't seen the other video. So there's just a hollow cavity under the seat here. So I'm ordering the drive shaft. It's in pretty good shape. It's the kind that has the uh, tilt control there and pretty neat. Uh, it's all here. It floats. It's real stable, I heard. Uh, the impeller's new, so that's nice. And uh, what I was going to do, I'll step into my garage. It's a beautiful night, by the way. What I was going to do is uh, I was going to hook up this two-stroke... Uh, little five horse snowblower engine, you know, like the flapper type electric start for convenience. And either that or I was going to run uh, over here. I've got the old Harbor Freight six and a half horsepower, a brand new one there. But I decided um, we're going to test this out with this little, uh, ordered this from China. It's a little PWM uh, controller, DC motor controller. It's got the little dial control. You've probably seen these on eBay if you're in electrical stuff. It's reversible, so I'm assuming that's the forward reverse switch. And it's got a little uh, voltage display meter, so kind of cool. And then I was looking at it, and it's got like the uh, Chinese characters focus. Well, anyway, then later I noticed it says right into there, it says motor and input. If it was to focus, you could see that too. But it's not going to focus, so let's not worry about that. So coming over here, this motor, this is one bad boy. You probably can't tell by looking, but if you look, that is some thick steel. This mount probably weighs a good 15 pounds. The motor itself weighs about 20 and I'm probably more like 18 pounds. Um, this is an Agni DC motor. I've made videos about it. Super high power. See, it just says Agni motors. That's the only identifying feature. But I looked it up. And this came off a two-seater go-kart. Like a Craig's Cruisers or a recreational facility. You know, Cedar Point type golf, you know, uh, go-karts. The electric ones that go like, say, 25 miles an hour. Um... But yeah, it was uh, originally hooked up to a 48 volt controller, it had 48 volt batteries, and uh, I ended up getting the go-kart and selling it to another guy for a gas project. He ended up, uh, the guy I bought it from gave me this motor, he didn't even know if it went with the go-kart and uh, the controller, which it obviously did. So I went and looked it up and found all about this Agni motor, which is actually interesting as hell. It, uh... On that go-kart, it was making like probably seven to nine horsepower running off those uh, lead-acid batteries. But this motor can actually be pushed up. Some people push them up to 120, 140 volts DC, and uh, they can kick out some serious power. They use them on electric racing motorcycles. I think the company name has changed. Uh, the in, it's something to do with the inventor's name. I have a whole video about it, but uh, right back in the day, they were called Agni Motors. The guy that invented them, they've rebranded them. They're still making them. He had a factory in India. If you just look up Agni High Power DC Motor video, you'll see what I'm talking about. I have a video on my channel, prolific invention about it. But here's the batteries that I'm just going to be testing. We might see it blow the smoke when I hook this up. So, I don't know if we can handle it, if the motor can take it. I know this is a brush motor, this is made for brush motors. So let's hook up the camera and uh, we'll test her out, see if it works. Got a roll some good heavy duty wire, green stuff. Alright. Let's just cut this off a piece. So 
So I always use a piece of tape when I'm using the same wire for projects, just to label my, uh, my positive lead always, I always label, just always done that. Probably should use non-conductive tape, but oh well. Uh, there we go. This makes it easily identifiable as our positive. focus yet or not but it says that side's motor cars and cameras on YouTube. You should. It's good stuff. Alright. So let's connect. Whoa, that thing's heavy. Let's connect. Positive and negative to this motor. It's not even labeled. That's fine. Okay. Sparked a little bit. It's a good sign. Oh, beep beep. Low battery. Let's make sure we're still recording. Alright, now this is what I'm going to choose. Let's see what we got here. Oh, turned it on. Zero, zero, zero. Bring the voltage up. switch. Oh, it's right in the middle position, so that was probably off, so there she goes. switch it right to off. Let me get you a little closer view of what I'm doing over here. Alright, so we got the controller right here. We got it wired up to the 24 volt. There's the switch. I don't have it all the way off because you saw it violently reacts. Keep that 
does a hundred, that's a percentage gauge I figured out. That's kind of cool. Shows you what percentage gauge you're out of it. I'm running off 50s, 224s. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it. Let's see how slow we can get it to go. Well, that's pretty neat. You can just creep that sucker. It's like half an RPM. Let's see how much power it has. Oh, I shut it off here. Let's see if I can stop this thing. Holy crap! This is a torquey motor. I'm almost pulling that out of my hand at that slowest speed. Let's turn it down and see if it has any torque at even lower RPM. Let's see what the slowest RPM we can get is. It's about the slowest we can get. It's still got torque. Enough to give you an idea. That is a torquey low RPM. This motor is amazing. Alright, so let's turn it up a little and see how torquey that is. I can't even stop that hardly. A little faster and it'll rip it right out of my hand. Yeah, I can't stop that. Ow. I miss how fast it goes. Guarantee it's 24 volts. That's, that's got to be half a horsepower or more. That's enough to move that jet ski. Whoa, you shut it off and it does that. It's not good for it. It still works. Yeah. I'm not going to do that again. I'm going to reverse it. Let's see if it spins any faster the other way. Maybe it's just going to blow in a different direction. Let's see if we can slow it down. Same, same torque tests. Okay, so that's super low RPM. Oh yeah, it's got torque. For days at that RPM, that's crazy. I love it. This is a cool motor. This is known as a variable field DC high power motor. But yeah, cool. Cause it's a brushed motor and the brush I guess this thing's like easily rebuildable you can actually if you look down in these holes you can see the it's got a weird design I don't know maybe you can't see it but and these are known for being able to do regenerative braking which won't matter in the water but I'm excited. This little $20 DC controller is so far it's working. It says 10 to 55 volts. I'll post a link just to show um, what it is on eBay. And, oh no, actually it was like $17, I believe. If I'm not mistaken. But so it says 10 to 55 volts. Right now we're running at 24. So we uh, we kicked that up to say. Um, maybe we will run 48 volts and get a couple of golf cart batteries. I don't know. We'll figure it out, but we're going to make, uh, I don't know if it's the world's first, but one of the first electric jet skis cause it, or wave runners. Because if you didn't watch my previous video about repowering the wave runner, my girlfriend doesn't really like going fast anyway. And uh, so this will be ideal for her because it's obviously it's electric. Um, maybe I'll throw in a little... Uh, little generator experiment to be able to run off of a generator if the batteries go dead that'd be kind of neat especially with this this um dc controller that will allow me to do that um but yeah we'll talk more about that later just uh and you know I like to shoot my full out of magic uh bb gun so here we got a little test right here at the end there Let's just, oh, I'll put the laser on it if you can see it. That CO2 was about dead. I just figured I'd finish it off the last 18 shots. And they went really slow because that CO2 was dead. But hit the can. It's got more holes in it. Fun, fun. Right, well, hey, thanks for watching. If you like this kind of stuff, you want to see more of the Wave Runner project, 
Maybe you want to see my extreme deflagration burner project. I'm going to be melting metal down with this bad boy old kiln. Uh, and I'm going to be using this gas powered blower. You can see I got the new tires on if you're following the video. I just took some off an old wagon. Got them replaced. This thing runs like a freaking top. I did a will it run video. Cool stuff. Um, with my uh, extreme deflagration burner, I'm going to be using utilizing the exhaust, an old fire extinguisher. I'm going uh, Friday to a friend's machine shop. I'm going to use his plasma cutter and cut a hole in the bottom of it because you watch this other video I'm going to post up. I wasn't very successful uh, cutting it with a jigsaw and I tried out some hole saws and I imagine I could do it with my sawzall, my angle grinder. I kind of dicked around with the angle grinder, but I'm just going to use the plasma torch. My work one. Uh, don't feel comfortable using there. So I'm going to go to my friend's shop. Anyway, if you like this stuff, just like, subscribe, I like to shoot this full automatic and dick around with it, do experiments. I like to do experiments with my, uh, my various repower projects. I've got the old Polaris 250 Trail Boss that makes almost 30 horsepower. It's old antique. It's cool. I'm going to do a little work on that this summer. That's more of my winter toy there. And I've got this that I'm working on, this old-fashioned motorized pedal bike. That was my newer one back there. There's a motorized pedal bike. It's an electric bike in there. This is high-power electric scooter, which also has a big, giant DC motor that we can play around with now that I have this controller. Uh, and then also this uh, Motor Hispania RX50. Anyway, like, subscribe, comment. You know, I appreciate it.